the Miami 5 are, and please excuse my Spanish pronunciation, Fernando Gonzalez, Ramon Lobanino, Antonio Guerrero, Guerrero, Rene Gonzalez, and Gerardo Hernandez. They've been unjustly imprisoned in US jail since 1998 for trying to stop terrorist attacks against Cuba. The United Nations, Amnesty International, and numerous legal, religious, and human rights um, they've questioned the fairness of the trial and long sentences and condemned the US government's persistent refusal to grant visas to allow two of the wives to visit their husbands who are incarcerated in US prisons. So what did they do, I think you ask? For more than 40 years, right-wing Cuban exile groups based in Miami have killed almost 3,500 people in terrorist attacks against Cuba. To save lives, Cuba sent five men to Miami to inf infiltrate and monitor the groups. At the request of the US government, this information was passed to the FBI in 1998. But instead of arresting the terrorists, the FBI used the information to identify and arrest the five anti-terrorists on September the 12th, 1998 in Miami, and charged them with spying and conspiracy. Despite intimidation of witnesses by the press and testimonies by prominent US officials that the five had not accessed any classified documents, the jury reached a unanimous guilty verdict on all charges without once seeing clarification of any evidence. The five were convicted on charges ranging from being foreign agents to conspiracy to commit murder and sentenced to between 15 years and double life. On top of the severe sentences, the five are denied regular family visits. The US infrequently grants visas to close family members. Two of the prisoners' wives, Olga Salioneva and Adriana Perez, have been refused visas 10 times and have not seen their husbands for nine and 11 years. Human rights organizations have condemned the trial and the treatment of the families. Amnesty International described the treatment of the five as contrary both to the standards for humane treatment of prisoners and to a state's obligation to protect family life. Okay, for those of you working on the internet, uh, as I said earlier, Cuban music is very dear to my heart. In order to help the development of music and all the performing arts in Cuba, the Music Fund for Cuba was set up. It's a UK charity which supports education and development of music and performing arts in Cuba. The fund was established in 2001 in memory of the singer Kirsten McColl, who was inspired by Cuban music in her last album and loved the island, its culture and its people. And once again, there's a website, www.musicfundforcuba.org.uk. So what do they do? Working with Cuba's music and art schools, the Music Fund for Cuba aims to help nurture new talent by providing much needed support and equipment for children and young musicians, dancers and artists throughout the island who may otherwise be denied. Cuba is renowned for its cultural traditions, its music and dance, and is enjoyed by people around the world. Budding artistic talent is nurtured and encouraged within the country's free music and performing arts school, which are open to all. Sadly, this heritage and the development of future talent are hindered by a lack of access to basic equipment and materials that we in richer countries often take for granted. Violin strings, ballet shoes, reeds for woodwind instruments, paper for music scores, and other small but essential items are in short supply. One of the main reasons for these shortages is the continuing economic blockade of the island by the United States. The Music Fund for Cuba provides much needed support and equipment for children and young Cuban musicians, dancers and artists throughout the island. They've already provided thousands of pounds worth of equipment, including reeds, instruments, ballet shoes, and teaching manuals for Cuban schools and performing artists. My own daughter took out some ballet shoes about 18 months ago when she was doing a project in Cuba. By supporting them, you can now help to keep alive Cuba's rich cultural heritage and nurture a new generation of talent. Your support, and that's for you around the world, your support could make a world of difference to young Cuban musicians, dancers and artists. Please support them if you can.